Welcome fellow hunters to another guide video. In this one we'll be having a look at the best ways to farm decorations in Monster Hunter World. This video is up to date for 2024 as pretty much all event quests are available so we know exactly what to farm. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. If you are still battling your way through the base game, aka low rank or high rank, there are two specific quests I can recommend for decoration farm. Number one, the greatest Jagras, and number two, the name's Lava Sioth. The issue is that you need to be Hunter rank 50 to be able to do them, which you probably will only reach by the time you are already in Icebond, where we obviously have different and better ways to farm decorations. So let's talk Iceborne. First, you should focus on finishing the story and getting to the Guiding Lands. Usually most armor will be sufficient to let you finish the story without any big problems. In case you still want to farm some decorations before finishing it, we got one specific very simple event quest, Flora Frostbite. It requires mastering 3 and you simply just need to gather stuff, it's super quick and efficient. My advice is to do this quest if you want to take a break from hunting and still improve your gear passively. From there on I really suggest finishing the story because any other very good and meaningful way to farm decos will be locked behind Master Rank 24 which you reach shortly after finishing the Iceborne story. Once you reach Master Rank 24 there's two ways to farm decorations. First one which can be a bit tough is the quest called The Wrath of Thunder Descends which involves hunting a tempered Zinogre in the ancient forest. The reason it's so good is because you get a guaranteed sealed face stones which are the only way to obtain the big boy attack 4 and expert 4 decorations. Still, I personally believe this grind can be really hard, so I have a different and simpler way to get you some good base decorations. Usually, if you're speeding through the game, you like all decorations from the base game, which you can get super easily via the in Iceborne introduced Steamworks. The Steamworks runs on Dragon Vein, which you can obtain in different ways. Either you gather it in the Guiding Lands, which is chill and easy, or you farm the Farewell to Zenoga quest, which you can complete in a decent time and nets you really good amounts of Dragon Vein. The Steamworks will then in return give you a lot of items that are very useful, especially the Celestial Wyvern prints, which allow you to melt nearly every single mantle in the game. But of course also the melding tickets. Melding tickets can come in form of steel, silver and gold, and net you an absolutely insane amount of old decorations. This is in my opinion the best way to get your base world decorations that you might be missing. Now keep in mind these decorations aren't all great but they still have a use. You can remelt them at the Elder Meldo with the first Wifarian ritual using Guiding Lands materials to turn them into face stones of higher rarity. As you need to farm the Guiding Lands anyway, this is a good way to turn old useless decorations into a chance at better ones. So let's get to the juice now. You're at endgame and you're still missing that really juicy attack 4 or challenge of 4 decoration. Fear not, we have some good quests to gamble for those. The most common way to farm the rarest decorations are the 3 Elder Dragon event quests. For Kushala it's called In Tempest's Wake. For Teostra it's Day of Ruin and for Lunastra the Cold Never Bothered Me. Those three quests only become available at Master Rank 100, so keep that in mind. At the level they are the most common and most accessible way to farm decorations. You will still find people doing these quests online in case you don't want to solo farm them. One slightly better alternative to these quests are investigations. In case you have an investigation that is tempered with a threat level 3 and has 5 rewards, they have a slightly higher chance of giving you more sealed face stones than the earlier mentioned event quests. But only with 5 box rewards, if it's 4 boxes your odds are again slightly lower. The downside is that no one else is running them, but maybe if you shoot an SOS flare people will still help you. At the end of the day, the decision is of course up to you. Lastly, if you enjoy pain and want to make your life extremely difficult, I got one more quest for you that you can run. Mew are number one. All you need to do is kill a tempered furious Bajang. Easy, right? The issue with the rewards on this quest is that they are not guaranteed. You can get the Astral Melding ticket and the sealed face on from this quest, but in much lower quantity. One additional word regarding the Astral Melding ticket. It cannot net you attack 4 and expert 4 decorations. Those are only available from the sealed face stones and not the astral melding ticket. 
Personally, I don't suggest farming these quests, but if you're feeling fancy, you can of course do so. So yeah, these are basically the best ways to get all decorations in my opinion. I personally only use the Steamworks mailing tickets and then ran Teostra and Lunastra a combined 400 times by now. I'm pretty sure I got every single decoration in the game. I never bother with high rank quests or the Flora Frostbite quests. I have also used decorations from the Steamworks tickets to remelt them at the Elder with Guiding Lands materials. So yeah, that was my journey to getting all the decos. That's it for the video. I hope it was helpful and got to the point. I didn't feel like bloating this video with too much information, but simply giving you any necessary info for your decoration farm. I of course hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more Monster Hunter content in the future. I also stream very regularly on Twitch if you feel like passing by and watching me play Monster Hunter World or Monster Hunter Rise. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one.